Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca Anderson and I'm the Educational Technology Manager of the Napa County Office of Education and that is my Instagram photo and that is me in it with me with Macklemore, Ryan Lewis and my son Alfred at the Music Museum in Seattle and all of the photos you're going to see today are from my own Instagram feed. Um, this session is being recorded, so you'll always be able to go back and uh, review this if you want to refer your other colleagues to it. Today's session is about uh, what Instagram is and how it works. And the plan is for you to leave here with some classroom ideas. So I'm going to share with you a number of those ideas and hopefully then you'll some of them might work for you directly or you'll just come up with your own variation of any of the ideas that you're going to see here today. Um, this is not a step-by-step -step training on how to use Instagram or how to implement any of the classroom ideas. This is just the this is the overview, it's the bullet version to getting you started in using Instagram and figuring out how you might use it in your classroom. So we're going to start out with talking about what Instagram is. Um, in short, it is an app that you use for your phone or for, or for your tablet. You take pictures with it or you can access pictures that are already on your camera roll. And once you've got your photo taken uh, and even video, what you do is you apply a filter to it. So it allows you to be a little bit creative with your images or to fix them up. Um, I fix up my photos all the time with Instagram because I usually have some lighting issues. And then once you have your photo fixed up or you've applied your, um, your art filter, you can then share it with those that are following you on Instagram. So here's another Instagram photo that I have. On the left side is a screenshot of a picture I took of my dog. And then on the right side is a picture of my dog after a filter has been applied to it. And I have also zoomed in on the image. So if we're looking at this photo on the right, I can see it's kind of it's a little bit more golden and it's more zoomed in. Um, and it's a f just a fun way to add special effects to your photos and like I said to fix them when maybe the lighting isn't so great or if you don't have a really great um, camera. So once you have your filter applied to your image then it gets added to the Instagram feed. Um, what you're seeing here is a screenshot from my Instagram feed just after I applied my filter. Um, up on the top left, left, you can see that's my Instagram username. On the right, it tells uh, when this was posted, 12 seconds ago. Um, on the lower left, you can see that there's an option for people to like the photo or to add a comment to the photo. And just above that, next to my username, you can see it says Sage the Dog. So you can add descriptions to any of the photos that you share. And then there's also some extra sharing options if you want to share it with people that aren't following you on Instagram. So over time, what happens is you acquire a library of photos. Any of your followers can come in and take a look at your photos. Um, if there's one they want to see, they would touch it, it would expand. And then on the right side is an expanded version of one of my pictures. So in this photo, that's my son Alfred, we're on an Amtrak train. I posted this picture and my friend with the username Desert Flyer said, noticed it and he said, ah, uh, he said, I'm jealous, I love taking Amtrak. And I responded back to him with, yes, it's a fantastic way to travel. So you can have little mini conversations happening on Instagram. If this format feels familiar to you, uh, it should, especially if you are already on Facebook. So uh, if we're looking here, this is a Facebook post. It's got that same layout. Top left, we can see who posted it. We know when it was posted. Below the image, there is a description. People can choose to like it or 
um, comment on it, they can share with it. So very similar to Facebook. The main difference though between Facebook and Instagram is Instagram is totally centered around photos. So I can't on Instagram go in and post what a, what a cruddy day I'm having, or I can't go in and post my uh, a link to my favorite website. So everything is centered around an image. So you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? Aren't people just posting their breakfast or uh, you know that they just had a latte and they have a fancy design they want to share um, who who really cares well uh, it doesn't matter if if we care about it or not if we think it's stupid or pointless because the fact of the matter is this is where our students are 51% um, of the class of 2014 reported using Instagram daily and then 23% of teens considered it to be their favorite network. So we can easily just choose to pretend it doesn't exist or we can embrace it. We can go where our students are and start using the tools that they're using um, and it's a nice way to give them a way to um, demonstrate their creativity and let that shine through while completing some academic tasks. So I'm going to share with you now some classroom ideas. I uh, cruised through several sites and um, I pulled from them a couple ideas from each one. So what I'm sharing with you is not a comprehensive list. It's just meant to get you started. I am going to be sending out to you following this webinar a link to access um, all of the uh, pages that I was looking at, all of the lists that I was looking at, so you can go through and you can figure out what's going to make the most sense for you. So again, not a comprehensive list. I tried to pull a wide variety of things and things that I think are the most useful, but you're going to want to follow the links that I send you and check out the list in greater detail so that you can get some additional ideas. So one popular use of Instagram that I saw over and over again amongst the different sites was using Instagram as a way to do digital storytelling. Um, so the kids go out, they take their photo, they apply their effect to it, and then what they do is they can tell the story through the description area of the photo. So they can add all their additional details. And then they can do fiction or they can do nonfiction. Um, photojournalism is also kind of a popular um, classroom idea that is popping up with Instagram. So people having kids go to live events and reporting on them in that way. I found it really interesting how many teachers were using Instagram um, as a way to work with their ELA students. So we don't have to just be sitting in the classroom and writing or reading. Um, this particular teacher was uh, sharing with the students different concepts and ideas on any any subject and then she asked the students to go out and photograph a metaphor that fit the concept and then the kids would use the description area to explain why they thought their photo um, what met was the metaphor science Science is also very popular with Instagram. If you're looking for ways to get your kids out of the book and into the world and applying their knowledge, uh, Instagram is a great way to do this. You can have your kids out identifying um, different flowers and plant types, um, insects, birds. If you're working on weather, things like uh, different types of clouds. So there's a lot of different options for science and identification. I found it interesting how math teachers were choosing to incorporate Instagram into their classroom. So especially popular for geometry. Um, so teachers are having students photograph things like lines of symmetry and parallel lines, perpendicular lines, angles, um, different types of triangles. 
Um, another idea was to have students create word problems inspired by different images. So many different options for math. Who knew, right? All right, um, showcasing artwork. So this is also something that I found kind of to be a common theme amongst all the sites. Um, basically what you would do as a teacher is you are photographing the student's artwork and either the artwork by itself or the kids with their artwork. Um, and what you would do as a teacher is you would have your own Instagram account. And I would recommend that you have a personal Instagram account and that you have one as a teacher. Just to keep things clean, you don't have to uh, worry about your per personal life bleeding over into your professional life. Um, you just need to remember that in order to have multiple Instagram accounts, you need to have a separate email address associated with each account. But that's a great way then to have to be sharing out work with um, kids' parents as well. So back to uh, ELA, uh, we talked about metaphors before. Uh, one teacher was um, posting photos and then having students create poetry or haikus inspired by that photo. Um, you could do this a couple of ways. You could have the kids um, take another photo and then they could add the description on their own Instagram feeds. Or as the teacher for your own teacher account, you take the photo and then you can have your kids use the comment area to then share their own um, poems or haikus or whatever it is you want to have them writing or commenting on. Field trips was another uh, very common theme I saw across all the sites. So it's a great way you can use Instagram to um, document your field trips. Um, if you're looking to develop something like a photo scavenger hunt, so as opposed to having kids going out and gathering items, they're taking pictures of things. Um, if you want to make sure, if you're on a field trip and you want to make sure your kids are actually viewing specific installations as you've requested, um, you can make them prove it to you. Have them take that photo and it's got to show up on their Instagram feed. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but Instagram has built into it a geolocator tool um, so that photos can be tagged with map information anytime the photo is taken. Um, so there are some different types of map activities you could do with your kids. Um, you just need to think about the fact that a lot of parents have turned off that feature on their kids' um, devices for safety reasons, so you'll need to think that through. But for any of your images, you could pull off the map coordinates and you could do some sort of an activity with um, Google Maps or Google Earth. So uh, a lot of different options there, but you'll just need to think through that issue of whether or not location services is turned on or off with your students' devices. Um, one teacher was using Instagram as a different way to communicate with their students. So uh, this isn't a, a teacher's photo. This, again, is my photo, and I was giving my son a hard time. Um, at, any <laughs> at any rate, um, what you can do is you can take pictures from the internet and put your write your own text on them and send those out through your Instagram feed. Um, one teacher was photographing book covers and posting them onto her Instagram feed as reading suggestions. Um, <laughs> judging a book by its cover, as they say. Um, you can use, again, we talked about this before, taking the photos and using them as a writing prompts. But I want to talk a little bit more about the idea of using internet images. So this particular teacher, she just liked finding creative ways and communicating with her students outside of traditional email or flyers going home to parents. Um, so she liked to do a lot of things with um, internet memes. So a meme is just basically a popular image or a photo that has your own variation on it. So right now you're looking at the uh, Dos Equis guy from the commercial, um, the most I think he's the most mysterious man, or most interesting man, pardon me. So uh, 
people like to take his line and turn it into their own. So in this particular instance, I don't always study, but when I do, I make sure it's the night before the exam. So this teacher was sending out a reminder that there was a, a test the next day. Um, it's very easy to grab any in image off of the internet. Um, you can just take a screenshot from the iPhone. It's the power button and the home button. On an Android device, it's the power button and the volume down button. And once you have an image in your cam camera roll, you can pull that into your Instagram feed. So you have a lot of different options, even if you're not feeling like you're a very good photographer. You can beg, borrow, and steal from the internet. Uh, I found this site interesting. A um, health teacher was using um, photography as a way for it to um, help her students understand nutrition. And so she was having the kids, and these were younger kids, photograph foods that they thought were nutritious or foods that they thought were bad. Um, you could also do something like having your kids do food journaling. A lot of the popular weight loss management programs now, instead of having people log what they're eating through text, they're asking people to take a photo of it. And then in order for it to be an, a, an approved healthy choice, their peers have to vote on their image. Um, so some different options here to consider. Um, but definitely a new way of thinking about how you might approach something like health and wellness and nutrition. Images, of course, are a great way to document change, especially long-term change. And that works really great with a lot of different um, science experiments that don't exactly happen overnight. And one thing that people don't realize is that Instagram also has video included within it. So you get 15 seconds of video and you can also apply the effects to that as well. So we talked about documenting long-term changes with images. Well, video is a great way to capture um, quick changes. So for example, if you are um, demonstrating changes, um, changing states of matter like boiling water or um, steam and fog. Uh, you can create short little videos. You can have your students create these videos and have them do the narration for them. Another thing you can do, I know that 15 seconds doesn't seem like a lot of time, uh, you can have your kids create book trailers. So uh, this particular instructor was having his students create a book trailer by um, stating the title, title and the author. The students had to present a drawing or demonstrate an action and then share a quote and then they also had to rate it. So you're going to have a link to access all of these book trailers so you can see how they look and you'll see that there's they're quick but there's enough time to do it. And It's just again a different way of getting kids to accomplish um, something in a less traditional manner. I know that some of you have some hesitations about being on social media and following your students. So please know you don't have to follow your students on Instagram if you don't want to. You can ask your students to um, share with you the web address to any of the images that they are taking because there are different share options that are available to you. And if you want, you can set up a Google form to collect all that information and store it in a single place. So I have a, a Google form here where I was collecting the student's name. Um, in the second box there, they would post the URL for the photo or video. In this particular instance, I also asked them to select the period they're associated with. Um, and then all that information gets dumped into a spreadsheet. And I can see per row, I can see the student name, and then I can see the link to their image. And I just would click on that, and I would be able to see their image. So if you're feeling afraid of following your students because you're afraid of what you might see, uh, know that you have an out. Um, make sure you do have your own teacher account. And make sure you're always testing what it is you're asking your kids to do. So you want to make sure everything is going to work okay. So that concludes our session today. I do have a short survey that I'd like you to um, take. It's only five questions long. Um, 
And if you do have any questions, please feel free to email me. Um, I do respond to the emails and will research questions if you happen to get stuck. Um, thank you very much for logging in today and for listening. And again, you'll have this recording and you can send it out to whoever you want. Thank you very much.